These videos are meant to be used in conjunction with formal in-person photographer training and should not be used as a primary resource in the training of proper use of retinal cameras. This video may be used freely for nonprofit educational purposes with the expressed acknowledgement of the University of California, Berkeley. Use for any other purpose requires written consent from the UC Berkeley Optometric Eye Center. This video is copyrighted by the UC Berkeley School of Optometry 2012. In this video, we will give a basic overview of retinal camera functions. We have used a Canon CRDGI model retinal camera to illustrate different components used while taking retinal photographs. While your camera model may vary, most retinal cameras have the same functionalities. Consult the user manual for your specific retinal camera model and or contact the manufacturer for more information. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with your retinal camera using these diagrams shown here. If needed, pause the video at this point to orient yourself. We will now demonstrate location and function for each individual component. Begin by turning on the retinal camera using the on and off switch located on the right side of the base of the retinal camera. With the CRDGI model, you must also turn on the camera back. Remove the lens cap. Instruct the patient to place his or her chin on the chin rest indicated here. In this example, the patient's eyes are not aligned with the height adjustment mark. Use the collar under the chin rest to move it up or down to set proper alignment. On the right side of the camera located near the top is a thin plastic slider. This holds the auxiliary lenses that will be used in taking external photos and highly nearsighted individuals. For taking external photos, this slider is pulled all the way out on the CRDGI model. If your model is different, external photos must be taken with a plus auxiliary lens engaged. The monitor displays the live view of the patient's eye as you line up the camera for retinal photography. It has several features. The central circular mires are used to align the pupil for external photography and the initial stages of internal photography. The letter in the upper right-hand corner of the monitor indicates which eye is being photographed. R for the right eye, L for the left eye. The sleep button will put the retinal camera into sleep mode. To wake up the camera, press any button. Please do not press the set button to avoid accidentally changing retinal camera settings. The flash setting can be changed using the buttons below the plus and minus signs. You will notice that the F stays constant but the number changes. A lower number corresponds to a dimmer flash, whereas a higher number corresponds to a brighter flash. For effective retinal photography, you must center the pupil within the circular mires. Use the joystick to make fine in, out, left, and right movements. Please note that larger movements are made by moving the base of the camera. Turn the collar at the base of the joystick to move the retinal camera up and down. The alignment button is used to switch between external and internal views. It is easy to get off-center in the internal view and it is often useful to toggle back to the external view to realign and center the pupil. Once realigned, toggle back to the internal view to take the photo. The view in the monitor is from an infrared camera within the retinal camera. To adjust the brightness in the monitor, use the lamp illumination knob on the right side of the camera. Turning the knob down to the left decreases illumination as shown here. Turning it to the right increases illumination. 
Optimal illumination is achieved when the optic nerve and retinal blood vessels are clearly visible in the monitor. It is important to note that this function only changes the illumination on the monitor and does not change the flash brightness. When taking external photos, use the focusing knob to focus on iris details as shown here. For internal photos, use the focusing knob to align the central wires to attain good retinal focus. When taking internal photos, the patient will see a solid green light for them to fixate on during retinal photography. This light is represented on the monitor as a small square dot. The fixation control button moves the fixation light to the left and right for capturing internal fields 2 and 3. You can also press down on the fixation control button to flash the fixation target three times. This will help the patient locate the green fixation dot if they are having difficulty seeing it. After initial setup and focusing, use the shutter button on the joystick to take the photo. If your patient is not dilated and has small pupils, you can turn the small pupil setting on with the SP knob. Note that in the monitor, several dots will appear around the perimeter. The area within these dots indicates the usable area of the resulting photograph. For more information on appropriate use of the SP knob, please see the small pupil troubleshooting video. You will notice a knob similar to the SP knob towards the back of the camera that says IR filter. Always leave the IR filter in the in position. The lock knob at the base of the camera on the CR DJI model is easily broken and therefore should be left in the unlock position at all times. This can be accomplished by leaving it completely turned in the counterclockwise direction as demonstrated here. For procedures on how to secure the camera for transport or if you have questions about any of the procedures shown in this video, please contact UC Berkeley Digital Health or IPACS.